Druid Breach is what we're playing today, and in this video we're asking the question, is questing Druid from Wilds of Eldraine good enough to replace my favorite card, Galvanic Relay? Let's go find out. This is it. This is the list that we will be playing today, and as I mentioned in the intro, we're replacing Galvanic Relay, my all-time favorite magic card right now, with Questing Druid from Wilds of Eldraine. So this card's really interesting in this deck because some people previously, and I think I might even agree with them, think that Galvanic Relay isn't powerful enough in modern because the mana isn't there. The best mana we have access to is Desperate Ritual. Kind of sad. And then we have Strike It Rich, Heretic Ritual that doesn't splice onto Arcane. And in order to make these cards even remotely playable, we play Goblin or Narcoman. So the interesting here with Questing Druid is that it gives you a backup win condition. And when your mana's bad, Act on Impulse or Reckless Impulse, I mean to say, uh, or even Ren's Resolve, those are better effects than Galvanic Relay for the cost that you're putting into them. So here we have an even better Reckless Impulse effect that you can cast on your opponent's end step untap and then play those cards. On top of that, you get a backup win condition. When you have Goblin and Archimancer, both the Adventure and the hard cast of Questing Druid are one single mana, making it a lot more affordable. And if you manage to fizzle with your Underworld Breach combo, you end up with a very, very large creature on the battlefield. And then from there, you have Dragon's Rage Channeler to assist the Questing Druid. You also have Lightning Bolt and Grape Shot to finish off your opponent, but that's all secondary stuff. How this deck actually works is that you want Dragon's Rage Channeler, Underworld Breach, Heretic Ritual, and Manamorphos, and then from there, you surveil on every spell you cast. Eventually, you find a Grape Shot and you hit your opponent. There's nothing like Tome Scour in this deck. You're really relying on the surveil from Dragon's Rage Channeler. Those are the upgrades for this video. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions, whatever, put those in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you. But for now, we're going to hop on into match number one, and I know that I'll see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to match number one. We're on the play. Reveal our Gigantha. Looks like our opponent's also a Gigantha game. We have a pretty strong hand. I will keep. I'll lead off with a Bloodstained Mire, and then we're going to play Baba. I'll target myself. There's a good chance I shuffle off this no matter what, but there's some reason here that if I revealed like an Underworld Breach, or a Dragon's Rage Channeler, I would consider keeping. But we didn't, and I get the shuffle. And then from there, I will play Strike It Rich, and pass the turn. We get a random draw. Goblin and Narcomancer was a good one. They have their own Mountain and Dragon's Rage Channeler. Matches their avatar, I like it. Another Questing Druid. We're going to play Land Pass. Spire Bluff Canal. Ledger Shredder. I'm going to hit the zero key, which is pass priority until the end step. So they're just on is it Merktide. They surveil away an underworld breach. Spicy. I guess they're not on Merktide. They literally couldn't be. They're playing Gigantha. My apologies. So is it breach? If you're interested, I uploaded my own is it turbo breach video you can find in the card above. It's just like the deck we're playing today, but blue instead of green. You get consider and preordain and I didn't end step questing Jordan. I was too busy talking, uh, but you get a bunch of really sweet spells. Uh, my apologies for too, being too busy running my mouth. All right, we'll grab a mountain here. Take a draw. Ah, that's so unfortunate. Whoops. I am so sorry. What to do? What to do? Okay, we will play a goblin. Ritual. Their ledger shredder triggers. They surveil a Teferi. Let's seek the beast. Okay, that was not bad. We will fetch, and this will bring me all the way down to 12 versus 6 power in the air. I don't love that. So I guess there's some argument to like, should I even bother playing the druids? 
Like, could we reasonably attack for lethal this game? I think the answer might be yes. I could be wrong, but we'll play the druid. Desperate ritual. This triggers it. And then we will seek the beast again. This triggers the druid. That was very good for us. Okay, so let's play Striker Rich. Our druid's now a 4-4. Four, four. And I can play the other druid. And now Manamorphose. Let's do red green. Yeah, I think red. Okay. We will abundant harvesting non land. Underworld breach was a perfect reveal. I think we just won the game. Okay. Player breach. I love it. <laughs> okay. So we don't have a grape shot yet, but we are going to end up with a couple super large creatures. Let's play a manamorphose. Get rid of some lands here. And I'll make green green. Draw land. Manamorphose again. I don't think I'm ever going to abundant harvest, so let's just uh, cast the manamorphose. Red green. Another land. Maybe I should have bobbled myself sooner. Abundant harvest on top. So I guess we can manamorphose. Use the bobble. And the two rituals. I'm more likely to flashback Striker Rich than I am to Ritual at this point. Red, green. Cast the Abundant Harvest. We'll say non-land. Another Manamorphose. Cast that. I have an 11, 11 Druid. That's crazy. Red, green. Lightning Bolt. Okay. Um, What to do, what to do. Like, I could Bolt Channel or Bolt Shredder twice. No, I, I can't Bolt Shredder twice. That is not in the cards. I think I'm going to Manamorph it. We can remove a Striker Rich. Okay, and let's do Red Green. Another Ritual. Cast the Ritual. We can Lightning Bolt there, Dragon's Rage Channeler. Now I can Manamorphose one more time. Escape our final three cards. Red Green. From 22. We find the Goblin. So if I play the Goblin, I'll have seven mana. I can then put Gigantha to hand and cast it. Okay. From 24 Gigantha. And I have two huge dryads on the table. I'm sorry, I keep on saying dryad. Druids. They are druids. They are not dryads. They are not Quarian dryad, even though in my head I wish it was. Um, yeah, I mean, this looked really sick. Uh, match one, game one. The namesake card of this league that I wasn't sure if it was better than Galvanic Relay coming up huge. Good luck, Ledger Shredder. Plan number three. Sacred Foundry. Prismatic Ending. That's unfortunate. And a Ragavan, which triggers the Ledger Shredder. So they have a blocker for my Druid. But then I can attack them for nine? Like, this is still a game. Okay, I go to nine. I was not expecting Prismatic Ending for some reason, even though I saw the Teferi. We draw another land. Well, they have to block. So let's make them do that. And then they'll take nine down to eight. Player land and pass the turn. So I guess if their last two cards in hand are both lightning bolt, I lose. The fairy time raveler, which could bounce the druid. They do bounce the druid. Okay. So currently they have to block my gigantha in order to live. Unless one of the cards in their hand has text on it. They're leaving back the ledger shredder. We draw another land. Let's escape the beast. Or seek the beast. My apologies. Okay, so we revealed some more threats. Ooh, apparently I can seek the beast off this. I wasn't sure if I could. Let's do that. Actually, hold on. Should I play Channeler first for the surveils? I think I should. So they get to connive here. And then let's seek the beast. I get the surveil. We'll surveil away the land. That could have been better. Play Bobble. Mill the Goblin. What are they drawing? Channeler. We'll go to combat. Send everyone at our opponent. I guess I messed up. Because if I didn't play all the stuff pre-combat, their Shredder wouldn't bounce with the Gigantha and it would be dead. Mm, probably misplay on my part. We'll play a Questing Druid. I could play another, but I don't know what that actually does for me. I mean, it puts me at 7, so I'm dead if our opponent has double removal spell. 
I feel like I've already thrown this game a number of times. We'll play Stomping Ground, and I'm going to play Tapped. Underworld Breach. So I guess if I would have thrown away the Pyretic Ritual, I theoretically could have drawn Breach that turn. There is a lot of different ways I could have played this game, and I feel pretty fortunate that I was the victor, because I feel like I could have easily have lost. Okay, so we're facing a Jeskai Breach deck. I think I want the Lightning Bolts. And I want to shave like Striker Rich and Abundant Harvest. Let's bring in the Veil of Summers. I don't think I necessarily need Besaju here. I could board that in over the Abundant Harvests, but I think I want Abundant Harvest for mana stability. Let's try this out. Reveal our Gigantha. Very good hand. Wow. Our opponent did not reveal Gigantha this game. So they sided in something that is double colored. Turn one Ragavan. We draw the Harvest. We'll grab a Stomping Ground. Play Channeler. Pass the turn. I'm hoping that we're allowed to block here. Nope. So our opponent connects with Ragavan. We will go to 15. They hit a Mishra's Bobble. That's not cool. They play Sacred Foundry. Ledger Shredder. And now they can play the Bobble. But that's their third spell of the turn, so it does not trigger the Ledger Shredder. They use the bobble, goes to my graveyard because I'm the owner of it. And we find land three. I think I'm going to Abundant Harvest this turn. I don't want to play out an Archimancer to die to like a Prismatic Ending or something. We'll say non-land. We draw a Ritual. Okay. Pass the turn. They draw off my bobble. Ragavan connects. We'll take three. We go to 11. My own Lightning Bolt. So this will put me to eight life. Another Shredder. They play the Bolt. They get to connive twice here. They discard Expressive Iteration and a land. They have three cards. I don't know if I can win. I mean, I could win if our opponent has absolutely nothing. So I need them to not have a removal spell or a counter spell here. We'll fetch down to seven. Interesting. That felt like an F6. Goblin. That resolved. Ritual. Triggers their Shredders, unfortunately. Not a whole lot I can do about those. Discards Prismatic Ending, so I was right about that. And Preordain. Ritual. They have three cards in hand. They have the Lightning Bolt. Okay, so if there was a chance they didn't have anything here, we play Breach, we get back the Dragon's Reach Channeler, and then we can cast some more spells, but they had it. And I'm pretty sure we're dead now. Um... I guess I'll cast some more spells. So I can play Breach. I guess technically I can do some stuff. All right, so there's a small chance I get lucky enough here. So now I play the Channeler. Okay, so Storm is seven. Let's escape Desperate Ritual. I don't know if I want to escape the Bobble because I don't think like an extra mana actually helps me at all here. What to do, what to do. Well, I guess the extra mana helps if I reveal like a mana morphos or something. All right, we're going to go big. I'm not going to play like a coward. We're going to escape away the Mishra's Bobble. Actually, I guess I don't need to escape it. I can like escape away something else because I don't need three rituals in my graveyard. Let's do this. Storm's eight. Surveil with Channeler. Another goblin. So now I can't even uh, mill a mana morphos. So if I escape Surveil, I guess I could escape and then draw Mana Morph. That would be my out here. No, there's no escape draw. This is just Pyretic Ritual. I think I'm just dead. Another Breach. Yeah, I'm just wasting time. Let's go to the next game. We have 10 minutes on the clock. Okay, I missed my window. Do I even want Veil of Summers? Like, that's another question. Or should I just, like, try and, trying to be, like, the best combo deck I can? We'll do two Veils. I don't think I want the full four. It seems like their deck's mostly just removal. On the play. Reveal our Gigantha once again. Sure. Player land. Bobble. Target myself. Don't want that. We'll fetch. Pass the turn. Another land. Okay. They play a Ragavan. We draw Manamorphos. I'm going to play the Arid Mesa here for two reasons. One, deck thinning. Two, escape fuel. I don't want to draw any more lands. Four is already a lot, so that's what I'm opting for here. 
Not having a lightning bolt or grape shot for a Ragavan was a little disappointing. I could have cycled Manamorphose, but I don't think that's a uh, like a powerful ritual. They play a preordain channeler. Okay. We will fetch. Grab that last stomping ground. We draw a channeler. I don't think there's any point in playing that, so we're just gonna hold tight here. Expressive iteration. I'm hoping that we're in a spot where our opponent chooses to disrespect us and taps out. It's one of the few ways I could see us winning this game. They find a bobble. They still have a land drop and they'll be getting a treasure from Ragavan. So they could still have a possible three mana this. There's their land. They attack for three. I will go to 13. They find another one of my bobbles. That's so good here. So they'll be drawing up to seven. We're in trouble. Okay, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I think I'm just supposed to hold. I can't win through Lightning Bolt here. When it was seven cards in hand, I just don't know what I'm expecting to happen. Our opponent is now delirious, so I will be taking five down to eight. Ragavan hits a ritual. They have seven cards. We know that they no longer have access to Gigantha. So that tells me that they probably have counter target spell in their deck now, but who knows? Let's attempt a channeler. Goblin and Archimancer. Mishra's Bobble, we get the Surveil trigger. They target the Goblin. I'm going to respond with a Pyretic Ritual. Surveil away the Bobble. Ritual. So this is their Surveil. We'll, we'll respond to that. Let's cast Manamorphose. Another channeler. I don't think I'm allowed to take that here, so we'll put that to the graveyard. We just have to find Underworld Breed. We'll do red green. Lightning Bolt. We'll cast a Manamorphose. Surveil. We'll get rid of the Jasper Ritual. I wonder if I'm supposed to bolt here so I can get one more look at a card that, that has text on it. Let's kill their channeler. They know that I have nothing now. They're going to kill my channeler in response. Goblin and Narcomancer. That does not win the game. We'll put it to the graveyard. We get to kill their Dragon's Reach channeler. They bolt me. I go to four. Manamorphose. Red. Green. No, let's do red, red. I don't think I need triple green for anything. And a land. We are at not a lot of life. We're about to lose our creature. I can put Gigantha to hand, that's about it. Maybe I'll get lucky and draw a Lightning Bolt. Pass the turn. We did not get lucky and draw a Lightning Bolt. They play Consider. Expressive Iteration. Another Consider. Mishra's Bobble. They use it. So now they get to attack with Ragavan, and I will go to 2 life. They hit a Ritual. They fetch down to 18 life for land number 5. They have 4 treasures. Okay, they draw off Bobble, draw a Bolt. I'm going to attempt to seek the beast. Okay, I can fetch to one. I don't think there's much of a difference between being at one and two. And then I can cast the Druid that would go away. Veil of Summer. It does not grow our Druid, but it does mean that my Lightning Bolt here is encounterable. Ledger Shredder. Prismatic ending. So we are 50% of the way through our deck, and I've seen zero Underworld Breaches. That is a card that could win the game off the top rope here. Oh, uh, they had Dash Drag event. Okay. Womp Womp. I chose, to, like, I knew that this was a possibility when I played Bolt as Sorcery Speed, but I don't know. That's the ball game, and we're 0 and 1. Our top card would have been a Druid into. Not a lot. So we dug pretty deep that game. Never found an Underworld Breed. Sometimes that happens. So we're 0 and 1. There's four matches left. We have to do the thing in match one. I'm sure we'll do it again. The game one, match one. I mean, obviously all of this was match one, but you didn't come here to see me. Well, let's just go to match two.
Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. All right, on the play again for match number two. Reveal our Gigantha. Double Grape Shot. And doesn't actually do a whole lot. Like, Abundant Harvest is our land number two. And then if this hand had like a Dragon's Rage Channeler, it's actually pretty good, but it doesn't. I think this is actually a Mulligan. This is better. We'll get rid of the Mountain. Play a Scalding Turn. We'll fetch. Grab a stomping ground and then play the channel. Pass the turn. And you want to keep fetch lands over basics or stomping grounds because they fuel your graveyard for escape. You always need to be considering your graveyard count. Our opponent plays a headquarters. We go to our turn. Unfortunately, we revealed another land. For 15 lands, I feel like I've been uh, getting a little bit flooded. I'll grab another stomping ground and let's play abundant heart. Get the surveil trigger, put that ritual right to the graveyard, and then we'll say in non land goblin, bring the pain. Ouch. We go to our opponent's turn, woodland cemetery. Okay, not quite what I was expecting. So this is four of the five colors, but woodland cemetery is not a type. So it doesn't reduce Leyline Binding. Spicy. Our opponent plays a Sterling Grove. They actually might just be Enchantress. Okay. I like it. We draw for turn. It's a Manamorphose. This might be a turn for us to try to win. So we'll fetch with the Bloodstained Mire. We'd have to find Underworld Breach. We'll play the Goblin. And then play Pyretic Ritual. So we do get Surveils here. Mill that Grape Shot. We don't need it. I'd love to mill over Striker Rich because it's an extra surveil, but we did not. Okay, and now we're all in on this Manamorphose. Uh-oh. Not loving this. We'll make green green. Bobble, we failed. And we don't have enough mana to play Gigantha either. This is just a big L for the entire club. Another channel. Sure, we'll keep it. We will uh, put the Gigantha to hand. And then I'm one mana short of casting the Gigantha. So we're just going to lose that three mana. But by using the Bobble now, our Dragon Storage Channeler becomes Delirious. So we can attack them for three. We draw the Channeler as expected. Layer of the Hydra. Okay. They play the Enchantress, and I, it has Shroud due to the Sterling Grove. So if I were to draw a Lightning Bolt, I cannot target this. All right, we'll play the Channeler. And now when I seek the Beast off of the Questing Druid, I will get to Surveil twice for... We will Surveil away the land, Surveil away Strike It Rich, Seek the Beast. Another Channeler. Fetch. We will play the Questing Druid. Then play Channeler. I'm just an aggro deck. You know, just looking to have fun. Doing with everyone that we can. So, attacking for 5. They're at 11. Overgrown Tomb. They're now at 9. Utopia Sprawl. Okay. So they get to draw a card and gain a life here, and it's a break even on mana. Brexian Unlife. Okay. The spell Grape Shot does beat that. But it would require me drawing an Underworld Breach, which... Hey, we finally did it. I was going to complain, and then we got lucky. All right, Breach. Aha. All of our spells are free because we have Triple Channeler. The escape cost is amazing. Because we escape three cards, but we get to surveil three cards on every spell as well. So this should be fun. We'll auto-yield to that. Let's play a Manamorphose. Actually, yeah, we should just do this pre-combat. We have the Druid. Okay. Build the Harvest. Goodbye Ritual. Goodbye Ritual. Druid gets a little bit bigger. Red, red. 
play the bobble. 28 cards left. Our storm count's very low here. Oh no, I should have surveilled that. We're not drawing a card off Measure's Bobble. Whoops. That's my bad. Cast the Manamorphose. I should have surveilled this. It doesn't really matter, but just letting you know. Manamorphose happens. We'll make a couple more red mana. <clears throat> so Storm is 4. They're at 11. So it'd be 5, 6. So plus the Phyrexian Unlife. I guess I just need to cast more Storm. Desperate Ritual, Surveil some more, build the Grape Shot. We have enough, I mean, we probably have had enough fuel for a while to win with Grape Shot, but I'm just going to start. We'll keep Underworld Breach on top. Target our opponent, Grape Shot again. We'll target them. And with the way that Grape Shot works is each ping is an individual point of damage. So with Phyrexian on life, it pretty much, if your opponent was at 20 life and had a Phyrexian on life, it just means that you need Storm 30 to win instead of 20. And now this next Grape Shot ideal should be lethal. Okay. Once again, keeping Underworld Breach on top of the deck, and they decide to concede. Thank you. <clears throat> Facing Enchantress. Well, we probably want these Pesajus as well as Blood Moon. Lightning Bolt is interesting because it does kill their Enchantress, assuming that they don't give it protection. I think we can probably take out some number of Striker Rich and maybe a couple Abundant Harvest. I think Harvest might be better than Striker Rich, so let's just do three Abundant Harvest. I don't want Aria Flame. Actually, I'm going to go down to one bolt. I'd rather have the Abundant Harvest. Let's try this. Okay, game number two, revealing Gigantha. This hand is very good. We will keep. I do need a second land, but this could even be a turn two win. Assuming that I find the land and Underworld Breach. Step one. We, now we just need the easy part. All we need is the second land. Play the Channeler. Fisher's Bobble. Surveil. That can go to the graveyard. Come on, deck. We need land two. Bobble them. I'd love a turn two win. Let's go. Sterling Grove, don't care. Give me land two, please. Bobble triggers. There we go, and it's a fetch land. Godless Shrine. Come on, Sterling Grove. Hey, okay. I think we're going to turn two town. And another ritual? GG's opponent, GG's. So we'll get another stomping around because I can. And who doesn't like to deal themselves just a little bit of extra day? Pyretic Ritual. In that land. Another Pyretic Ritual. Goodbye, Abundant Harvest. Look at that stocked graveyard already. Let's Desperate Ritual. We can mill that one. Manamorphose. Mill the Questing Druid. We'll do Red Green. Underworld Breach. We're going to mill the Channeler. And then I can immediately play the Channeler. This is going to work out well. Okay. Storm is six. Let's play a Ritual to get started. So now on every spell we surveil two. Which is just great. Now we Manamorphose, from his 8. Yeah, definitely mill the Channeler, because that's going to mean that every spell should break even now. Red, red. Uh, I don't think I'm actually allowed to play the Channeler, because if I play the Channeler, we don't have enough to escape moving. But Ritual Grape Shot should be lethal. I don't even know why I'm trying to play a third channel. I don't need it. <clears throat> okay. Prevail. Prevail. So now I have five in Graveyard, Grape Shot. Yeah, this is just lethal. Target them. Turn two win. Love it. Graveyard. Graveyard. Quick click. I don't know. Your enchantment versus my enchantment. One of them seems a little bit better than the other. Target them with Grape Shot again. And this is going to be the match. Two more cards to the Graveyard. Quick click click. Hit that F6 key, and boom. All right, so that means that we're one and one in this league. I'm glad that we got a turn two in there. That was fun. And uh, I'll see you in the third match. Let me know what you think of the deck so far.
Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Three in a row on the play. Reveal our elk friend. Sure. So this hand needs some card advantage. Like an underworld breach would be nice. Don't get me wrong. But even with an underworld breach, it's not doing a whole lot. Our opponent mulligans to five. We will play a strike at rich and pass the turn. Looted Delta. Sure. Channeler was a good one. We're just going to play land to go. If they're holding open removal, I don't want to play into it. So now if we draw into Real Breach, we'd be okay. Blood Crypt. So they're likely on Rakdos Scam. Burning Catacombs. Dothy Voidwalker. Very scam like. Okay, so Underworld Breach no longer a good draw. We do have two main deck copies of Lightning Bolt and then three Grape Shots to deal with this. I will put Gigantha to hand, play a Bobble, pass the turn. They attack, we'll go to 15. They have land three. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Bobble them. They have a land coming. Okay. Draw off the Bobble. Land number four. Underworld Breach. <clears throat> so without the Voidwalker in play, this would be pretty good. I think the actual right play here is to not play Gigantha, and instead I'm going to flash back the Striker Rich and pass. So they draw, and then Fable the Mirror Breaker triggers, and they get to discard two and draw two. They attack for five, they create a treasure. Hard cast to grief. That's unfortunate. So... They're probably going to take the Underworld Breach. Maybe I'm wrong. They took the Goblin. That's interesting. That would not have been in the first four cards I would have selected there. Okay. Come on, Lightning Bolt. No such luck. Play Dragon's Rage Channeler. Play Bloodstained Mire. And Pyrotic Ritual. I'm trying to save these fetch lands in case I manage to get Underworld Breach in play. And then Manamorphos... To buy another bobble. Manamorphose happens. Red, red. Another land. Yeah, I'm beginning to think that maybe 15 lands is too many. Kind of crazy. Grab our basic. Let's play Gigantha. So there are other builds of this deck that exist where people play Street Wraith. And because that turns on your Channeler's Delirium. And it's a easy card for escape fuel. So when you play Street Wraith, you can very easily get away with 14 lands. Just because you have, you know, that extra deck velocity. They swing out. I'm just going to block the Goblin. If you have a Lightning Bolt, I'm dead anyway. Like, it just doesn't matter. Hardcast Fury. Sure. So even if I were to draw a Grape Shot or Lightning Bolt, now it's too late. Ay ay ay. 50% of our lands again. Okay. So I do like Aria Flame in this matchup. I also think Veil of Summer is pretty good against the Black Duck. Lightning Bolt's decent versus Dothy and Ragavan. You take out Strike at Rich and Abundant Harvest. That leads you at 61. I think from there you probably shave like one of the goblins. Let's try this. Game number two on the play. Reveal the Gigantha. Unfortunate. We have to send this back. I think we keep this, but it's pretty risky. Grape Shot goes on the bottom. I'm going to hold open Veil of Summer. Maybe it's a coward's move, but I think it's best to just not lose to the Terminal Grief play. Drawing Questing Druid was interesting. If we draw another land here, we can then play it on the end step, but we didn't. So we're just going to pass. Ragavan. There's our land. Pass the turn. They swing. We'll go to 16. They exile a land. They fetch. They now have four mana. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. They have five cards in hand. On their end step, we will seek the beast. 
Underworld Breach, Desperate Ritual. Okay. We could try to win here. Even through a Lightning Bolt. Okay. Play the Channeler. Attempt Desperate Ritual. Surveil Triggers. Lightning Bolt goes to the Graveyard. Play another Channeler. Pyretic Ritual. Graveyard. Graveyard. Pyretic Ritual. Graveyard. Graveyard. Now we play Underworld Breach. Graveyard. Graveyard. Term is se uh, six. Pyretic Ritual again. Term is seven. Goblin goes to the graveyard. Veil goes to the graveyard. Phantomorphos. Spell number eight. I don't. I was hoping not to reveal an Aria Flame. I didn't want them to know about it. But I need to win the game. So let's focus on that rather than hiding information. Phantomorphos again. Spell number nine. There's the grape shot. We'll do red, green, ritual, spell 10. And now from here, it's just double grape shot. There's another. Mill over the lightning bolt. And then the second grape shot from 12. All right, we are headed to game number three versus Racto Scam. Hit that submit. We are on the draw in game three. I am going to keep. Turn one, Polluted Delta. Grief, Exile, and Grief. So it looks like I'm going to be hit by double Grief this turn. Unfortunate. They take the Questing Druid. And then, not dead after all, they come back. I guess if this is your play, you take the other Questing Druid. And they do. They have three cards left in their hand. We'll play the Bloodstained Mire past the turn. Then they dash a Ragavan. Okay. So I'll take six here. That puts me to 14. They hit a grape shot. And their end step will fetch. They have three cards, including the Ragavan. So I could attempt to kill the grief here. I don't think I love that play. I'm going to play Arid Mesa Pass. They don't know about the Arid Mesa and they do know about the mountain. But I want to thin out a stomping ground so that way I'm not losing more life later. Ragavan is back. We're taking six. So this is going to put me to seven. The fetch will put me to six. And if I kill this grief, that will put me to five. Underworld Breach. Not a very good hit for them. I would have liked it, though. That said, I would have fetched on the end step anyway. So I'm at six. If I kill the grief, that puts me to five. I would also need them to not have another one of the not dead after all effects. Another land. Deck is really good at drawing lands when you only play 15. Let's play the Manamorphos. We'll do red green. Bolt. Okay, I think I'm going to save the lightning bolt for the Ragavan. They floated a white and then fetched. Orcish Bowmaster. Okay, so I'm going to let them finish targeting and then I'll Veil of Summer. So they do get one more trigger here. The storm is four. Five, and then six. So I can target them. I don't think I want Aria in this board state. I can also block a Ragavan now. One, two, and then three at the Grief. If their last card in hand is a Not Dead after all, I'll be a little bit sad. I'm at five life. They have a Ragavan and two unknown cards in there. Can we pull a rabbit out of a hat here? We cast Ragavan. They have one card left. Another land. We will put Gigantha to our hand. I have to attack here. Okay, so in their beginning of combat, I will lightning bolt the Ragavan, so that way if they had another, they couldn't dash it. We'll get the basic mountain. Bolt the Ragavan. I get a Surveil trigger. I don't think I want Veil of Summer. They have two cards. Another land. We'll swing. This puts them to eight, which means if they don't have anything... I can kill them next turn. But in order to play Gigantha, I have to fetch to one life. So I'm dead to another Orcish Bowmasters. If I don't play the Gigantha, they could have another Ragavan. But I guess they didn't play Ragavan last turn. I don't think I'm going to play the Gigantha. I think it's just a little risky. They could have a Lightning Bolt or Bowmasters. Dash Ragavan. Okay, that's disappointing. So Ragavan will connect. I go to two. Veil of Summer. 
And they had the bolt, so it didn't matter. Mm, that's a bummer. Okay, I mean, that was a good match. I mean, we didn't win, but those were some good games. And we are now one and two, unfortunate. But hey, some good magic being played. There's still two matches left. Let's go try to win those. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Hey everyone, so my OBS crashed in the middle of that match that we're about to replay, so it's not going to be a live replay. Instead, we're just going to hit the play button and I'll talk as, you know, actions happen. But not a whole lot I could have done. The file was also corrupted. It didn't save anything at all. Here's the stinky part. It crashed match th or game three when I was down to like 10 minutes on my clock it was within the final turns of the match. So we were almost all the way through, but then it crashed, unfortunately. So we start off by revealing our Gigantha. We mulligan to five. And I even mentioned, like, I wasn't sure if I wanted to mulligan the seven, but it was essentially a, a four lander bobble double abundant harvest. Like, that's not a keep. I end up playing the channeler here because if we draw an underworld breach, it's a win. But they untap. They preordain, and then they end up playing Scalding Tarn and casting, I believe, on Holy Heat, and we lose the Channeler. I just play a Striker Rich, and we pass. They have a Ragavan. I draw another Channeler. I play it. They then Lightning Bolt it, and then attack me and flip the third Channeler, and I've just decided that I've had enough. Like, I've been buried. You don't need to kick me while I'm down, and we'll go to game number two. We are on the play for game number two. We have a stellar hand here. And this is actually kind of a longer game. I decide that if this game is going to work, I need more lands. So I play the Abundant Harvest for a land. They have Ragavan. And now I play the Arid Mesa and I pass. So my thought here is that I want to get them to tap out on their turn. So I'm going to Lightning Bolt the Ragavan. And if they counter spell, I can Veil of Summer. Instead, they just pass. So the next few turns are mostly just laying go. Um, I put Gigantha to hand, my bad, but it's a lot of draw go up until this point, And we end up in a spot eventually where they have like six lands. And I mean, it's not very exciting, but just kind of what happens. And eventually I seek the beast on the run step. So questing Druid was, or, yeah, questing Druid. I didn't say Dryad, uh, questing Druid was drawn and then I cast it and I'm hit by a surprise spell snare. I thought that was actually pretty interesting. And now I Aria Flame, they counter target spell, I Veil. And now they force a negation, I Veil. I got scared here for a second because they fetch and then everything just resolves. I end up drawing the sixth land that gets the final fetchable out of our deck. And I cast this Striker Rich. Okay. So now they untap, I'm pretty sure they slam Murktide region, and I make a play mistake here. I was too busy being focused on their life total, and I think in hindsight, I was supposed to double grape shot the Murktide region. Instead, I pointed all of them at the uh, opponent, and I realized that after I selected for this grape shot, I was like, oh, maybe I should have killed the Murktide region, uh, because I, I saw my life total. So that was not ideal. Uh, I don't know why it stopped here. Okay, it's not letting me play this any further, but we grape shot them. We grape shot them again. They end up at five life and they attack me for six. I go to seven. I untap. I draw Mishra's Bobble. I play the Bobble. I look at the top card of their deck. It's a preordain. I play Gigantha. I pass. I draw the preordain and it's a Manamorphose. Manamorphose kills them in their upkeep with Aria Flame. We're off to game number three. Oh. It just lagged. We're back. So now you get to see everything that I just described. How lovely. Oh, are you going to move or what's the deal here? Okay, so we're moving again. That's good. All right, it's stuck again. I'm not going to sit around waiting for this. We can just go look at. Okay, I, I started talking and then it moved. We'll just go to game three. I've already told you the end. All right, reveal Gigantha. This is a pretty good hand. I'd like to draw land number two, but we have the guaranteed Abundant Harvest into land two. They don't have a turn one Ragavan, which I thought was pretty interesting, but they Steam Vinced, 
So this tells me that they have like a spell pierce or maybe a bolt. Uh, they play a tap land. And I could decide to slam the Aria, assuming that they're only holding open a bolt. But I have the Veil of Summer. Let's be patient. On their end step, I seek the beast and they spell pierce. So they've used a spell pierce and I decide, okay, uh, I think that this is a window for us to try to do it. So I slam my Aria here after seeing the Ragavan off the bobble. And they have a second spell period. And I think that this was a pivotal point in the match. If that Aria resolved, I think we probably win this. They dash a Ragavan. And here's the brutal part. They flip my Underworld Breed. And then they escape Bobble using my Underworld Breed. And I don't feel like we're really in this game that much. However, I end up clawing my way back in. Which is kind of tough to believe, but it's true. So we show them a second Veil of Summer. And... I think they attack again with Ragavan. They create a treasure, preordain. I draw another land, fetch, and then we just put Gigantha to hand. Yep. Chalice of the Void on two. But we have double Veil of Summer. Chalice says that those spells are countered. Veil of Summer says your spells can't be countered. So I decide that I'm going to wait a turn. We just have to find an Underworld Breed. So they attack. We Lightning Bolt the Ragavan. Easy peasy. We draw... Land number five, I hard cast the Gigantha, and then they lightning bolt me. And I think to myself, are they going to burn me out from five life? Turns out that they just need a delirium. So that means that Unholy Heat kills my Gigantha. They dash another Ragavan. Okay, so they have five cards in their hand. I decide that this is probably a pretty good spot for me to try to win at three life. Veil of Summer resolves. I play Ritual, but in hindsight, I should have just played the Mana Mark. That would have been the better move. So I I'm down on the ritual mana. And then I draw another ritual. That's a bummer. And I am now dead to a lightning bolt. Uh, but they play Narset. And then they reveal counter spell. They dash a Ragavan. And I go to one life. So we look like we're out of this game, right? Well, I end up being pretty lucky here. And I spike an Underworld Breach. Never count me out. Veil of Summer. And they have the Force of so we actually top decked the win, but they had force in a game on top of everything else. So it's unfortunate we lost the match. I feel like this and the scam matchup were both super close, but our deck fell a little bit short. So we're one in three. There's still one more match left to be played, but the, the deck is putting up impressive games. It's just we're not converting. And I don't know if that's a deck flaw or not. It could just be a small sample, but... That's my thoughts at the moment. There's still one match left. I hope you join me in it, and I'll see you in the fifth match. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final match. Let's see if we can finish this and get 50 play points back. We need a win for that to happen. Sure, we'll keep. Strike it rich. Fisher's Bobble. We'll target them with the Bobble. Summoner's Pack. So we're likely facing Amulet Titan, which means that this Lightning Bolt is not very good. Turn one, Urza's Saga. There's the Amulet of Vigor. I am in trouble. Goblin, that was a good draw. Okay, we'll play the goblin. Whoops, apparently I added the wrong color mana. And then we'll pass the turn. We play another copy of Urza's Saga. Oh boy. Draw for turn. It's another striker red. We will cycle this mana morphos. Red green. Questing druid. Okay. Let's seek the beast. We can play the druid. Play Dragon's Rage Channeler. A little bit bigger. We will fetch, go to 19. I have to get a stomping ground. Play Striker Rich. To reveal away the ritual. I wonder if I'm supposed to just cast spells here. Try to find that uh, Underworld Breach for next turn while making a really big druid. Put that to the graveyard. We will ritual. Let's say Myra goes to the graveyard. Flashback Strike It Rich, Graveyard, Flashback Strike It Rich, 
that can go to the graveyard. And I think I'm going to hold the lightning bolt. I don't, I doubt that I'll need it. Oh, I meant to attack with the goblin there. I was too busy talking. Okay. Well, if we lose the game by two, it's my own fault. So Urza Saga goes to the third chapter. The only thing that you can really lightning bolt on their turn is Azusa. The other one, um, I can't think of the name right now. Like, I have the art in my head, but I can't think of it. It's a, it has a four toughness, so you can't bolt it. Primeval Titan. This is killing me. I'm just going to look up the name of this guy. Dryad of the Elysian Grove. And Dryad is a 2 4. Okay. So they're making a bunch of mana here. Summoner's Pact. Cultivator Colossus. I think I'm going to bolt this. Bolt the Colossus. I think we want the Seek the Beast on top. All right. Let's hope that we live. So they have Besage you. Not good news for us. They have roughly infinite mana. And a Teleria West. So they could go get another Titan. I don't know if they play multiple Cultivator Colossus, but we'll find out. All right, our opponents made a ton of mana and a second Summoner's Pact. They grab Primeval Titan. They play the Titan. They pick up a Slayer's Stronghold. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that I'm dead here. They play the Dryad and Azusa <laughs> and another Dryad. Map. So they attack and now they get to search out four lands. So if they get four Valakuts, I'm pretty sure it just deals me roughly. I don't even know if they play four Valakuts, but it, apparently they grabbed. That's just the first trigger that deals me 12. Okay. Yeah, I'm dead here. I won't make them click all the way through. it. Bummer. Too fast, too furious. Let's get those lightning bolts out of our deck. Blood Moon seems good though. I think you could probably cut a grape shot as well. Let's try this. Back at it for game number two, revealing Gigantha. Yeah, this hand is good. We will keep. Turn one, stomping ground tapped past the turn. First turn, Urza's Saga. Amulet of Vigor, classic. Wow. Okay, so we're looking at a turn three win right now. Play the goblin, pass the turn. Now, this is pod racing. They turn three to us in game one. We get to try to do the same. Uh-oh, unless they turn to me here. That's not cool. You shouldn't do that. Have you reconsidered your life choices? Six mana. I'm sorry, four mana. The one ring. Yeah, I can't win through that. That's annoying. Okay, so... We can do a bunch of stuff. We just can't win. So we'll play a channeler. Heretic ritual. Surveil. That can go to the grave. But seek the beast. Graveyard. Manamorphos. Graveyard. Green. Green. We'll play the questing druid. Play a ritual. Graveyard. Play the mistress bobble. This can also go to the graveyard. Am I allowed to have an underworld breach? Bobble goes to the graveyard. Let's manamorphose. Bobble goes to the graveyard. Red, red. We can questing druid from graveyard, so we will seek the beast, which is what I meant to say, not questing druid. Okay. So we're looking for a blood moon here. Find another ritual. We can cast that. And there's our blood moon. Put that to the graveyard. We'll cast the questing druid. Escape blood moon. So now our druids get a little bit bigger. Land goes to the graveyard, and they concede. Take that one ring. Whew. Okay, game three. Am I supposed to have Besaju in my deck? I feel like it just slows me down. Like if I board it in, it has to be over like a button harvest. But maybe that's okay. Guess we can try this. Game three. Our opponent keeps seven. So I have a turn to an Archimancer into I don't know. Um, I think this hand's a little sketchy, but. Am I really supposed to send this back? I feel like mulliganing for Blood Moon as well isn't great because they're probably boarding in Force of Vigor. But if I'm not going to mulligan for Blood Moon because of Force of Vigor, is the Underworld Breach Hand even good? That's another question. I think I'm going to mulligan this. Like, it just doesn't feel like it does anything cool. Sure. We'll get rid of a Striker Rich. 
this is a very similar hand to our game one or our seven but it allows me the ability to see more cards and potentially have a turn three i have a fast opener with a boreal grazer yeah this is like almost the same hand um let's i'm just gonna guarantee land abundant harvest we'll say land bobble them pass the turn we find another bobble Azusa. So we know that they have a Teleria West. And they play it. So they have two cards left in their hand. Blood Moon's a good draw. Let's see their top card. Prime time. We're in on curve. Oh. Okay. I'm going to play the goblin. Pass. The one ring. Okay, so they're not playing prime time. Okay. It's time to uh do something here. Let's start by seeking the beast with questing journey. Love that. All right, so we'll play channeler, play stomping ground. Ouch. Heretic ritual, travail. Put the channeler to the graveyard. Underworld breach. Goblin goes to the graveyard. We'll play the channeler, and then pyretic ritual, and we'll surveil two. Land to the graveyard. Abundant harvest the graveyard. Strike it rich. Doing okay here. Well, Pyretic Ritual. Another Channeler. Another Underworld Breach. I think I have enough mana. I should probably be playing this Questing Druid. And then we can escape Seek the Beast here. Get rid of the Strike it rich. I can't see myself flashing back Strike it rich. Bin Manamorphose. To the Graveyard goes Desperate. The Druid gets a little bit bigger. Strike it rich. Seek the Beast does make it a little bit better in the mid combo, I think. Like, in this spot, it's definitely better than, like, a Galvanic play. We'll play another Druid. All right, let's cast the Desper Ritual. Pyretic to the Graveyard. Scalding Tarn to the Graveyard. Creatures get a little bit bigger. Let's Manamorphose. So we are looking to play as many Blood Moons as possible and then pass with a super large board state. Red, green. Well, there's two Blood Moons. We need one more. So that way we don't lose the Force of Vigor. Manamorphose again. Storm is 15. We can still Grape Shot their creatures. We just can't target them due to the protection from one ring. We don't need this, Besage. Manamorphose will do green, red. A land. Let's play a Blood Moon. The Sage you to the graveyard. Heretic Ritual to the graveyard. Play another Blood Moon. Land to the graveyard. All right, and they concede. So we got the 2 3. We were able to beat Amulet Titan. So, what are my thoughts? I do think Questing Druid was an improvement to the deck overall. I felt like it was pretty powerful. The beatdown mode was more relevant than I thought it would end up being. We lost two really close matches, one to Scam, one to Is It Merc Tide. I think both of those matches could have gone either way. We went 2-3, but this could have been a 4-1, especially if a better player was playing. I don't think I played super well this league, if I'm being honest. So I liked the improvement. I don't see myself going back to Galvanic Relay. That said, I don't think that this is better than the Is It version of the deck. I think that... Why we lost was we struggled to find Underworld Breach. We are way more Breach dependent than we ever have been. And while Questing Druid was an improvement over Galvanic Relay, Relay's really good at digging deep to find your Breaches. So there's some, given some take, like mid combo, Questing Druid was amazing. Being able to, you know, flash back the Reckless Impulse and then or escape reckless impulse, I should say, and then make a huge creature was super powerful. I really liked that. But there's also games where we just went 30 cards deep and never found Underworld Breach, which is pretty disappointing. So there is the Is It build that I linked in the card above at some point in this video. Um, this is the last version I have. Um, there's four Manamorphose, four Underworld Breach being cut off down here. But when you have Consider and Preordain, you're just so much better at finding your Underworld Breaches. And if you wanted to be an absolute crazy person, you could not play 4 main deck Lightning Bolt and then instead play Street Wraith in those slots. I think you want the Pack Negations. So we never actually faced a Leyline Binding deck in this league, 
But Pact of Negation is super good against Leyline Binding because it protects your Underworld Breach. And then it stops Force of Negation and removal on your channelers and everything else. Like this version of the deck, I think, is probably better than the Gruel version. But Questing Druid was really interesting and I'm glad I tried it. So let me know what your thoughts are. Maybe I'm completely wrong and you have a different perspective. I'd love to hear why. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day. And as always, keep storming. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. After you do that, open up our description where you can find all of our social media networks, including our Discord, where you can discuss today's deck in that Discord with me and tons of other combo masterminds. It's absolutely free to join, and it's certainly worth your while.